What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to Anchorage in the Storm. We are in part two, day five. Amen. And today we're going to be talking about going from fear to faith. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And I want to ask that you go back to day one, part one, so that you can gain all that God has for you, because I believe you're not watching for no reason. And you may hear my smoke detector in the background. Um, I took the battery out, y'all. I put the battery in my car. And now all I got to do is you take that last step and go replace the battery. Amen. So <laughs> this should be the last day that we hear that smoke detector. Um, and for all my returning watchers, viewers, I'm sorry. I love you guys. I love you guys because you are letting me know that you are walking with me. As I walk with God, we are walking together. I can't see you. I don't know who you are, but I do want to go live soon one day um, when I'm eligible. And we will all chat about this together. I do want there to be another host in reading. Um, so we can all get through it together and feel a sense of um, our need. Uh, people need to see this. People need to see us come together. Amen. So let's get into it. We are going to go over the devotion, reflection, and the Bible um, verses or chapters relating to, okay? So as I've said, from fear to faith, the ways of the world tend to revolve around fear. Even the fear of losing out on something is, the, is what inspires the world to work for something. We can't deny that fear truly is an effective propellant, but that propellant is not what the New Testament believer is called to live in. We are driven by something greater and propelled by something stronger, the love of God within us. The antidote to fear is faith. An act, and an act of faith is a natural response for the heart moved by love. Amen. Let me read that again. The antidote to fear is faith, and an act of faith is a natural response for the heart moved by love. Amen to that. So let's keep going. Following this line of thinking, if we're not constantly reminded of the love of God and his ability to overcome, faith won't be an overflow of our lives. It takes the renewing of our minds to walk in strong and steadfast faith. So don't be disheartened when you're met with fear time and time again. You're building the muscle of faith, and that's a worthy ven ven venture. In 1 King 19, when Jezebel threatens Elijah, we see an interesting response. Consider this. Elijah had just done wonders in the land. He had proclaimed a drought and then ended it, revived a widow's dead son and even brought down fire from heaven that decimated 450 prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. These are no ordinary feats. Surely God was with Elijah and surely was a man of faith. Even so, when Jezebel threatened to kill him because of all that he had did, all that he did, his response was to react in fear rather than faith. He ran away into the wilderness and showed clear signs of what we now coin as clinical depression. Now imagine if a man of God with a with faith enough to raise the dead and bring down fire from heaven can react to a situation in fear instead of faith. How much more susceptible are we? In a world that constantly plays around with our needs as humans and yanks us into the trap of fear, we must set ourselves on a firm foundation. God beckons us to cast our cares upon him and take courage in his strength. Crossing over from fear to faith is a series of choices we make to trust in him, he, his promises and his love. The courage we gain in the process is a derivative virtue derived from our faith in God. This is so good. We going on to reflection, you guys. But this is so good. This is this is a lot to unpack. Let's see what reflection says before I get sidetracked in on my testimonies, okay? In your own life, what is one fear you'd like to overcome this year? 
Is it having a conversation with a person you lost touch with? A job position you lost touch with? A job position you wanted to go for? Or even stepping out to take a course you've been looking into? When your response has been even subtle fear, how can you step out in radical faith? Take a moment to ask God what step you can take this week to grow in your walk of faith. That is reflection. Reflection says, take a moment to ask God this week. What step can you make this week to grow in your faith? Amen. This is so good. So I want to, um, I want to piggyback on, um, okay. I want, I want to piggyback on having faith and then just like elijah did he did he conquered so many things and then somebody threatened his life okay somebody threatened his life i have um i have a similar i have a oh my god should i say it now okay i have a similar um i can relate to that i was i conquered a lot in um building my family at one point I had a very good job. Still, I still have a good job. Just talking to you and 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 practicing Bible study, uh, walking with God, Amen. But I was working in a medical field where it was my dream job to stay in the medical field. As I went to school, did the nursing thing, go to go about um, working in my field and practicing in my field to go higher in the field, Amen. And I was building my family along the way, but my kids' dad. The father of my kids, he just didn't want to get on the same path with me. And um, it was because of his fear. I, I know it. I know it was because of his fear. But he, some people can have so much fear that they will threaten the life of their, the people around them because they've already said, hey, I'm going to do this with you. The person mess around, do it, and they don't own up to their part. So it's like, man, I got to knock you down a couple pegs because I know you doing it. I know I said I'm going to do it, but you can't do it when I'm not doing it. That's going to make me look like I'm a liar or I'm, I am I, I don't really want to do it. So he did just that. He tried to, no, ain't no try. He did knock me down a few pegs. Okay. And, um, it was to the point where he threatened my life. Amen. But God, okay. God. And so. All I had to do was remove myself from him to keep conquering on. Yes, I have our four children, but I realized that I cannot be around my kid's dad while conquering things that he has fear of doing, which is just moving on in life and doing better things. Amen. I just had to get that out. It's more to that. It's more to that testimony. It's more to that. Testimony. But that's just a snippet because I can relate to Elijah. God put me in a position to conquer so much. And sometimes when you're around people that see it, they know you, they want to destroy you because it's like, okay, people going to ask, who are you? No, nah, they might not ask, like, who are you attached to specifically? But somebody could be attached to you and feel shame because they know they're supposed to have a, 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 a part in your life and helping with something. And this is, I'm talking about the father of my kids. He knows supposed to help. He know he was supposed to help me take care of these kids. But by me conquering, it kind of calls him out in his mind. It, it causes shame, calls him out because it's like you expected for this girl, this woman to sit here and just be knocked down and stay down and take care of my kids by myself, which I'm taking care of by myself, but I'm not, I don't have no shame. Amen. Woo. Let me get up. Let me get up. Let me get us up out of here. Cause I'm, I'll be the, it'd be an hour. Y'all be the Mr. Shower. Okay. So that's our reflection. I hope that you all can reflect on your life where you had fear and doubt and you overcame it because of a push somebody gave you negatively. Amen. So let's go into the word. Of course, we're going to read about 1 King 19 because that was a reference in our devotion. And it says, 1 King 19, chapter um, chapter 19, verse 1. 
Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, including a detailed account of how he killed all the prophets with the sword. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah with this warning. May the gods judge me severely it by this time tomorrow. I do not take your life as you did others. Elijah was afraid, so he got up and fled for his life to Beersheba. I hope I'm saying it right, Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there. And then it says in Psalm 23, verse 4, Even when I must walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and staff reassure me. Now, we're reading out of the NET version, and I always express how I would love to translate whatever version I'm in when I'm reading the Bible. So I just want to give an example. This is the NET version of Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is a very common um scripture whether you know bible or not whether you're a believer or not somebody will tell you yea though i walk through the valley the shadow of death i shall fear no evil for thou art with me thou rod thou staff they come for me so this is uh the net version of that amen then it says in psalm 56 verse 3 it says when i am afraid i trust in you in god i boast and promise in god i trust i am not afraid what can mere men do to me? Amen. That just piggyback. What could my kids that have done to me with the hand of God on me? Amen. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. The last one is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. By casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Amen. That is it, guys. I, I listen, don't give me no, don't give me no session in somebody's church. Because I be the, mm -mm, we be had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I got so many testimonies. This just awakened me to how much I need to share my testimonies because I just never know who I can help. Amen. So I'm going to lead us out with prayer. Um, and I hope that you all grab something from this or it had a little tug at your heart about going from fear to faith. Before you step out that door, you, you, you say, you might say, oh, it's raining. Let me grab my umbrella. Fear. It's, I'm fear of getting wet, but I have an umbrella. That's how I want you to walk out into today's sunny day. Uh, I I fear going to, um, I fear going wherever you're going. I, I fear going to work and being disrupted by this person. They usually have something for me that's outside of my line of work. They usually take my focus from me, but God will get you back on track and he will give you a set of tasks that nobody can disrupt you in that place. Amen. If you going out and you say, man, my car didn't start yesterday. I have a fear of it not starting. You still go out and try to start it, right? This might be the day that it start. Look, that was, I said, no, I don't even need to. Listen, let me go ahead and pray so we can go, okay? I told you I will prolong with a testimony, amen? So, Father God, I thank you in this place. I thank you for this moment, this time, this day, this month, this year, because we are coming into a awakening with you, God. I can feel an awakening on me. I can feel an awakening on people around me. I can feel an awakening on people I approach or that approach me because some are negative, God. And that negative approach to a positive approach is bitterness. And we act that you we ask that you take the bitterness from people, God. We act that you we ask that you take the entitlement from people, God, for the littlest things, cutting in front of the line in a, in, a, in a place where somebody feel like they decided to go, but they knew they was late for work. So they cut in line, God. We ask that you take the entitlement from people today. We ask that you have us love one another even more than we love ourselves at times, even more than the examples place where we, we shouldn't give as much love. We have enough reason to not love the next person because of what they did to us. But you, God, you instill in us a heart of love. So we exude love forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.